Cell therapy is an emerging field that offers new options for treating insidious diseases. It works by taking the patient's own cells, modifying them, and using them to attack harmful cells, such as cancer cells. Today, in our Sunday special report, medical experts report on how this exciting therapeutic field is developing in Taiwan. My name is Ling Ching Ying and I am 40 years old. Around the time he was two years old going on three, I was taking a shower one day and noticed a heart lump on my breast. After that, I was tested and found to have stage two cancer. It's hard to say how I felt at that time. I basically felt empty. Then I started to feel nervous and I was worried that this child would end up alone. For Ling Jingying, getting sick meant that every moment spent with her son became especially valuable. They walk hand in hand to a kindergarten near their home. This 10-minute walk is a special moment shared between mother and son. Lin's breast cancer has gradually worsened since it was discovered in 2017. It's now spread to her liver, and the disease has advanced to stage four. The dosage of medication depends on me, depends on my condition. When it's adjusted higher a bit, my cancer cells are killed more quickly. Chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and targeted therapy are the most common treatment methods for cancer. But with the advancement of medical research, scientists have discovered that the cells already in the human body can fight cancer, too. This red stuff we can see there is what we call T cells. It is a type of killer cell. When it encounters these blue cancer cells, it will begin its attack. Mainly, what it does is it releases these granules. What these granules do is to enter the cancer cells and then punch holes in the cells. After it makes these holes, the cells will rupture. Looking through a high-power microscope, you can see the body's immune system cells attacking the cancer cells. Roughly 20 years ago, researchers first discovered that the cells in the body's immune system have the potential to fight cancer. In 2010, researchers at the University of Pennsylvania went a step further, working with the immune system cells taken from the body of a five-year-old girl and genetically modifying them to treat acute lymphocytic leukemia. The clear results of this experiment prompted the medical sphere to take notice of these genetically modified cells called CAR T. These CAR T's are really special. They are formed by taking T cells and genetically modifying them to create a new form of receptor protein. This new receptor recognizes the antigen CD19 and so can target and kill cancerous B cells. Aside from the immune system cells that can fight cancer cells, the human body also contains another type of stem cell that can be used to facilitate the repair of tissue or organs. In the summer of 2020, this diabetes patient took the stage in tears as he prepared to undergo stem cell therapy using cells from the tissue of his own body to treat the ulcer that developed on his feet due to diabetes. Extracting tissue from a patient's own body fat, doctors then separate, cultivate, and enlarge the extracted material to obtain stem cells. Since these stem cells are from the patient's own body, when they are reinserted into the body, they can revitalize its ability to heal wounds. In September 2018, the health ministry pushed through legislation that allowed the use of patients' own cells in their medical treatment. This allowed use of one's own stem cells to treat leukemia, cerebral stroke, large burn injuries and skin problems, as well as chronic conditions like degenerative arthritis. Doctors could also now use a patient's own immune system cells to treat late-stage cancer. With this legislation, Taiwan formally entered the era of cell therapy. How are cell therapy and standard treatment with medicine different? The first person to cultivate mesenchymal stem cells was someone named Dr. Arnold Kaplan, 
What did he say about it? He said that cells and stem cells are not a type of medicine. They are a pharmacy. Numerous molecules of all types can be found within cells. Therefore, they are just like a pharmacy. You can get many types of medicines at the same time from them. Chen Yaochang, director of the Taiwan Association for Cell Therapy, is a leading authority on cell research. He is happy to see cell therapy thrive in Taiwan. However, he feels that in order for that momentum to continue, researchers will need to focus on the use of foreign body cells. In other words, they will need to use cells donated by people and to develop cell therapy products. There is one benefit of foreign body cells. One product from one person can be used on many people. A cell bank can be set up ahead of time, and preparations can be made so it can be used when needed. This would reduce the costs involved. Another benefit is that it would be much faster than using your own cells, as you wouldn't need to wait for your own cells to be cultivated. After COVID-19 struck at the start of the year, medical professionals worldwide began experimenting with mesenchymal stem cells, or MSCs, to try to save the worst affected patients of the coronavirus. These SMCs can inhibit inflammation within the body, while at the same time accelerating the regeneration of the stem cells remaining in the lungs. They can speed up the healing process. The use of the technique with COVID-19 is still in the clinical trials phase, but we are all using foreign body cells. When you have a patient who is on their last breath, who is already using a breathing apparatus to stay alive, you can't wait for their own stem cells to be cultivated. That process still takes two weeks. If foreign body cell therapy takes off, every manner of cell therapy products could be commercialized and mass-produced like pharmaceutical drugs, giving form to an eventual cell therapy industry. However, to date, there are no regulations in place to manage cell therapy products. Cell therapy is an emerging trend in medicine. The Taiwan Medical Association says it's an imperative to create a law akin to the current Pharmaceutical Affairs Act, one that can strictly regulate the manufacture of cell therapy products. The first major hurdle is to decide whether cell therapy products should be considered medicine. In traditional therapy, we generally use medication, and that medication generally is pharmaceutical drugs derived through molecular chemistry. These things normally can be made through a fixed process, and the quality is quite stable. Cells come from organisms, and when the therapy is taking place, the cells are still alive. Since they're alive, there's no way for the quality of cells, like that of pharmaceuticals, to be kept very stable. Cells are living things, and it is hard to produce them to a unified standard like that used for pharmaceutical drugs. That's why the Taiwan Medical Association feels that cell therapy products should not be considered medicine. In the past, we've always treated diseases using medication. So do we know what medication is? It is drugs made using molecular chemistry. It's different from this advanced medical treatment we are talking about now. The manufacturing process is different. Extracting cells from tissues like this, the concept is different. The preservation of this product is different, and the method of treatment is different. So, based on that idea, we must come up with a specific law for its regulation. Furthermore, in the process of cultivating cells, doctors will make use of cytology, immunology, and other fields of study outside of pharmacology. Therefore, to ensure a high-quality product, the process must be managed by personnel with backgrounds in these areas of science. People who study chemistry and pharmacology, whether they are a researcher or a pharmacist, don't actually understand the nature of cells. So when you are dealing with an advanced product, you need to create a separate set of rules. In the future, manufacturers of cell products and all the personnel involved will need to have special qualifications. The industry will also need its own legislation. For example, in the EU, they have the European Medicines Agency. That's the EU's government department in charge of medicine. You could think of it as the Food and Drug Administration. Since regulating this industry isn't quite the same as handling medicine, they organized a special committee to deal with the manufacturing process and medical ethics issues. Cytology and immunology specialists control the committee. 
Worldwide, the medical industry is heatedly debating how cell therapy products should be managed. But for patients, the main issue is much simpler. They hope for laws that can safeguard patient rights. Li Jingfeng was once a stage 4 kidney cancer patient. In 2015, he traveled to Japan to undergo immunotherapy and witnessed firsthand the effectiveness of cell therapy. But he is quick to emphasize that cell therapy is not a magic bullet. There is no way to be certain which patients will have success with immunotherapy. To be realistic, at present there is no method of curing cancer, so all we can do is do a bit more here and there. Standard medication must go through three stages of clinical trials before reaching the market. This is to ensure that the medicine is safe and that it will be effective on the majority of people. But some new medical products, because they're intended for use on the gravely ill, are placed on the fast track. They only go through two clinical trials before they are put out on the market. Some of these cell therapy products can cost 1 million NT or as much as 10 million NT. If such products are later found to be ineffective, the patient bears the brunt of the loss. <laughs> First, it should be said that for us patients, our greater hope is that we won't get the opposite of what we're looking for. If we receive treatment that results in some type of harm, that would be bad. Secondly, the cost should be directly proportional to the results. For example, if cancer could be fully cured by a treatment, I believe that many people would be willing to give up their life savings to access it. However, when a cancer is not cured and the patient still loses a fortune, that is a truly lamentable situation, is it not? Relatively speaking, legislators should try to implement some guarantee in this respect. Business interests may seek to profit off others' misfortunes. The government should use its power to prevent people from falling prey. With advanced therapies, the material costs of the product themselves may be quite expensive. However, the cost may be acceptable if, right at the start when you're formulating the medical contract, you clearly communicate to the patient, this is the situation and these are the risks involved. In addition, with regard to costs, if such laws can be strictly enforced, we hope that fees can be based on the results. In other words, we could establish an expectation with the goal that you would pay according to the results of the procedure. If you pay a certain amount, then you could expect a certain end result. The era of cell therapy has arrived, and both patients and physicians eagerly anticipate advanced therapies that can bring new possibilities. All that remains is for legislation to catch up with innovation, for laws to support growth in new methods of treating diseases. Bedridden and challenged by disease, many patients like Ling Jingying continue to fight for their lives. They hope that developments in medicine can bring them a new source of hope.